launch a new offensive against U.S. soldiers to get them addicted to heroin. Of course, Afghanistan responsible for 90% of the world's poppy crop. According to the Daily Beast, U.S. intelligence officials say the two groups hope to undermine troop effectiveness while raising cash for weapons and recruiting. Uh, they already generate much of the cash of the Taliban through the sale of heroin to the world. It could be a very effective strategy for the Taliban. In fact, here at the morning meeting, sources tell us serious drug use by U.S. soldiers has actually doubled in the last four years. And anecdotally, you talk to soldiers in Afghanistan, they spend most of their time sitting around uh, waiting for a mission, uh, which only opens up that much more of an opportunity to take some heroin. Uh, and here to discuss the growing threat, Chief Investigative Reporter for the Daily Beast, Gerald Posner, uh, also uh, author of Miami Babylon, joins us from Miami. Uh, also in the conversation, former CIA Special Agent Jack Rice, who is going to Afghanistan in just a couple of weeks to make a variety of assessments, not the least of which uh, the heroin problem. Uh, Gerald, you broke the story. What is the, what is the scale of the problem? Well, you know, right now, Dylan, we're looking at just the, uh, what we hope is going to be the beginning of this, but they're preparing, and when I say they, the Army and the Veterans Administration is preparing in their hospitals for what might be a deluge, because, look, in Vietnam, we ended up with a, nearly a 20% addiction rate to China White, the heroin that was coming from the adjacent Golden Triangle. The Soviets in the 1980s went back uh, to Russia with a major heroin problem, and today, Russia is the number one consuming heroin country on the planet as a result of those returning uh, uh, Soviet fighters. Today's Taliban are yesterday's Mujahideen who fought the Soviets. They understand that this is an additional weapon. They are getting their money, as you said, from the heroin and opium crop, 90% of the opium, and they're looking at the possibility of hooking Americans not only on the cheap heroin, but according to the U.S. intelligence report and picking up with conversations, they developed the ability now for smokable heroin. Their labs didn't have that before. This makes it a much easier way to try to get it around. This is a concern to Army, uh, to Army officers I talked to. Jack Rice, how much of, an, of a, a security risk is it for a military operation that is inactive, uh, stationed far from home, and has availability of highly addictive uh, substances like the ones Gerald was just describing? Well, Gerald's absolutely right when it comes to this. If we, if we look back and look, look at things like Vietnam in the past, we can look at the first Gulf War. The best way to look at what happens to those in the military is not necessarily to talk to the leadership in the military. Let's go to the VA. Let's take a look at what those people are dealing with right now. But if we think about the, these guys, these men and these women, primarily men, who've had four, five, six different uh, units going into places like Iraq and then in, into Afghanistan deployments, I mean, think about the pressure that these guys are under. It impacts their ability to do their jobs while they're in country. It has the potential of biting back at the United States, just like it's doing right now in Russia, which was something that happened from the 1980s in Afghanistan. So Gerald, this is a disaster. Yeah, Gerald, how much is the flow of money, or how much would the flow of money be, of, I'm assuming, military wages to the heroin dealers in Afghanistan and the Taliban ultimately? Well, you know, Dylan, it's interesting. The Pentagon estimates that the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda are taking in somewhere between 80 and $400 million. Now, that's a big spread. So, I mean, you know, the, the, what they're doing is they're guessing. They're not sure. But one thing is clear. I just had a conversation the other day with Mahmoud Karzai, uh, Hamid Karzai's brother. He's one of the most successful businessmen in the country. And he told me that what's happening in Afghanistan is that the Taliban right now are paying more for their fighters each month than the Afghan army and the police are able to pay. And that Al-Qaeda is able to pay more to family for a suicide bomber in residual money than you could imagine, several thousand dollars, which is a small fortune over there. So they are getting the money. They are using it to fight us. And this is a great tactic because it weakens our morale over time. And Jack's right. You have to look at the VA. And the VA says these problems show up five to ten years after the conflict. So we aren't going to know how bad this is for some time. Knowing, Jack, what we all are learning about the current states in Afghanistan, the, the, the disputed election with uh, President Karzai, the pressure uh, to send more troops to that country, although it's unclear what, what the direct intent would be with those troops, you add to it the fact that you've got American troops in Afghanistan right now uh, doing very little if you talk to, to many of them, firefights that repeat over the same piece of land. Uh, then they give them up and fight for them again. It sounds very similar to stories from Vietnam. Uh, and then a drug problem. If we are to accept all of that, how do we begin to make a more intelligent set of decisions from elections to drug control to troop levels? Boy, it, it, those are great questions. If you look at the amount of opium that's being created, the amount of heroin that's being created right now, it's as much or more than anything we have ever seen since we arrived eight years ago. On the other hand, think of this as your biggest problem. You have the Taliban, which are very good administrators. They're just drug dealers. You 
have them on one side versus the Afghan government, which are horrible administrators and in many ways also drug dealers. How's that? You have one, one side or the other. That's where President Obama is right now, dead center of that very point. Uh, uh, Gerald, any reporting from to you from the, either the White House or the Pentagon, Pentagon on the issue of, on the heroin issue specifically? Oh, yeah, the Pentagon's very interesting on this, Dylan, because they're very aggressive in saying, by the way, they, they say that we don't have a problem at all. We have drug testing in place. We never had that in Vietnam. This is an all-volunteer army. It's not a draftee army. Morale's much higher. And through 2006, we don't have a single test of somebody in a combat zone failing a urinalysis test for heroin. But I have to tell you something. I mean, I spoke to six soldiers, um, four of whom had served in Iraq and two in Afghanistan. They told me that heroin was everywhere. Uh, the methadone clinics are packed back here in the United States. And... And the soldiers also told me that the, the random drug testing often doesn't take place in the combat zone. So the Pentagon is saying we don't have a problem. They're just in denial about it. The White House hasn't said a word yet. All right, uh, Gerald, thank you very much, Jack. Uh, thank you. Uh, be safe when you go to Afghanistan and come back uh, with better information. Uh, again, that's our only way forward here is to really be honest about uh, what it is we're dealing with, especially when we're talking about uh, our children in foreign countries. Contessa, what's going on in the rest of the world? Uh,